Hey everybody, this is Michael Gunger, and I'm going to do something a little different today with this podcast. Normally, the production of this podcast is quite a thing. <laughs> it's fully scored, and I've got a plan on where I'm going with it all throughout. But I wanted to call, I wanted to talk a little bit more off the cuff today about why I do this podcast. I just kind of speak very frankly because I've got a lot to do <laughs> on my, just on my calendar. I've got a lot going on. I'm a dad. I have a partner. I have relationships that I want to tend to. I'm a composer and a musician. I've got a couple other podcasts, the liturgist podcast, the alien, and the robot. I make meditations for the patrons of the liturgist podcast. My book comes out next month. We're going on tour again, the last Gunger tour. We've got a liturgist tour coming up. I'm telling you, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot. So why bother with another podcast? The truth is that I've been realizing over the last couple of years that how I see the world is not is not a mainstream thing anymore. <laughs> and I have to figure out how to be clever in a way on my other shows and my other work in the world. I have to, on some level, kind of mask what my true thoughts and feelings about all of this is, which is that there is no me, there is no you, there's just this, the one thing going on. And that's not a message for the masses. It's not a message that egos want to hear. It's pretty much the opposite <laughs> of everything egos want to hear. So I don't have plans of this being the most popular podcast on iTunes or probably even the most popular podcast that I produce. After all, the way is narrow. But I wanted an outlet to be able to speak a little bit more directly. And sure, in this podcast, we normally still have fun and get silly and usually have high production value. But the real reason that I'm making this podcast is not for any of that. That's just the clothes that I'm putting on it. And I like putting nice clothes on it because... This is really what I care most about, helping people become free of suffering. The truth is that my experience of my life is so fundamentally different than it used to be. I used to suffer in almost everything. Even the sweet times of life, there was a bittersweetness to it, knowing that it would end, having fun, but thinking something in the middle of it, like, this won't last. Is this good? Am I okay? The questions, the thoughts, the beliefs that made me leave this moment for other moments, imaginary moments of yesterdays and tomorrows. And as such, life was really boxed in, not to mention the really bad suffering, the full-on depression moments, the full-on shame and discontent with what is. And my experience now is difficult to put into words. But as I sit here in front of this computer monitor with this little pink file recording, there is no separation between the speaker and the color that is on the monitor. And it's not a dead monitor. It's not a dead microphone. It is the very face of God. There is no resistance to the world. Because I am the world in my experience now. That's not to say that I, this body, this weird podcasting composer dude, has the experiences of all of it in his body. In other words, I, I don't feel the emotions in this body over here 
that you are feeling over there. There's still the localized experience, the localized sense of a Michael Gunger. But there is no longer the belief or the identity with that story. And that's what it is. It's a story. And that's what this whole podcast gets at week to week is that it's all stories. And when you believe the stories, when you cling to the stories, that's what the suffering is based in. And these stories, they start with identity. They start with the sense of I being a separate something from everything else. And from there it spins out into religions and philosophies and name it. And that's what the show is, finding names to all of these stories that they're way out there. They're way out there and beyond the assumption of identity. But they always, always, 100% of the time, are built at its foundation on an identity of separateness. And that's what the podcast is trying to get at, is to show the link take our farthest out stories and trace it back to who we think we are. And for most people, that sounds confusing at best. It sounds like philosophical mumbo jumbo. But it really is the difference between heaven and hell in my experience it is the difference between experiencing a life that is fundamentally suffering and a life that is fundamentally bliss and that may sound extreme and it is <laughs> Now, don't misunderstand me by saying fundamentally bliss. That doesn't mean my experience does not include sadness or anger, frustration, or any emotions that are typically considered as negative. But from where I'm sitting, those emotions are beautiful. To experience anger are you kidding me like this fire in the belly that moves towards action it's like it's phenomenal i i had experience recently of deep sadness too i had a weekend where i really was having to question some big things about what i was doing with my life and there was a sadness to it that i had to let go of some things that my body didn't want to let go of in some place, but there was not an identity with that sadness. My body trying to hold on to that was just something that was happening. And there was watching within the sadness, awareness, loving awareness, just being and experiencing what it was experiencing. And that's not, it's, it really is <laughs> difficult to explain how different that is than how I used to experience sadness. One thing about it is that it doesn't last very long from this awareness. The sadness comes and then it goes. And there's a thrill and a, a vivacity to it. There's a bliss to it even though it may not be the typical way that we think of experiencing bliss where everything is just happy 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 i think about this winter when i was standing out in one of the really cold nights of winter in colorado while we were traveling and it was like to the bone frigid And my body responding to the cold by not clenching down 
as for most of my life it did when it was really cold to be like oh no this is cold this is horrible but like letting go into the cold and feeling all of it not resisting it being coldness and being a body experiencing coldness was incredibly blissful and it's hard <laughs> to describe and most people think that sounds crazy and maybe it is crazy <laughs> maybe I've just lost my mind but if I have if that's what's going on it's pretty great and I'm telling you all of this not because I want you to think of me as special because I'm not. I, meaning this dude over here, talking into a microphone, this ego that speaks from a place of separateness. That's not a special thing. It's not an elevated ego, an elevated body over other bodies. There's something different about this human than other humans. It's just that in this body, awareness became aware of itself and saw the ego for what it is, a story. When I say awareness, I'm speaking with the capital A. I'm speaking of who you are, who I am, who all of it is. And so here we are in this world full of suffering, we're all telling our stories and we're all clinging and grasping because that's what we're doing and it's beautiful. But there's also part of this body that has this compassion in it for the suffering that knows how hard it can be and knows that there are a few of us that the suffering, the game that God is playing at suffering has gone on long enough. And there are some of us that want to be free. And again, that's not most of us. We are free. Like when you go a step beyond what I'm trying to get at with words, which will always fail here. We all are free. We all are the one free doing, happening, movement, of the emptiness. <laughs> we all are free, are bliss, but most of us don't know it. Most of us are caught up in the stories that we're telling and the thrill of the ride, but we've forgotten that it's a ride. So this podcast is, is a whisper into the internet. My other podcast is so much bigger <laughs> than this one. And the ego of this body over here doesn't always like that, you know. I I spend my energy on a huge podcast that we want to. All of the hosts and all the things we do on the other podcast is is about relieving suffering on some level as well, but it's on a a more relative level on a level of stories still usually that I know isn't going to solve the problem. Not the fundamental problem. It can help solve smaller relative problems that do cause suffering as well. But as long as there is separateness, there will always be suffering. And this is impossible to describe to those who see from separateness. It's not translatable. It's almost like being in a jail cell with somebody and we're wondering and talking about how we can be free within the jail cell. And we're rearranging furniture and, you know, making the bed, <laughs> cleaning the toilet, trying to make that jail cell as nice as possible so that we don't feel like we're in a jail cell. Meanwhile, the door is open, but we're just not looking at it. We're standing 
at the door looking in to the cell, thinking our problem is with the decoration rather than realizing we are fully free to turn around and see what's actually happening and walk out of the cell. And almost none of us turn around and look at who's looking. Look at who we think it is that's believing the stories. Really look. And this podcast is for the few who are ready to stop suffering, who are ready to let their egos die in a way, who are ready to play the game while knowing that it's a game, to act the play while knowing that it's a play. And the truth is that I, this ego, this body, have nothing to teach you. Sincerely, nothing to teach you. (laughs) I don't know more than you. I don't know anything, fundamentally. This is just a report from my experience, which is all that any of us really have. It's just that in this body, the awareness that animates it, which I have no reason to believe is anything other than the same awareness that animates yours, by the way, saw through what the ego was doing, which was trying to make itself the subject of experience. And thanks to some mushrooms and some great teachers and a hell of a lot of pain through life, awareness finally turned around and realized the door was open. And so for those who have ears to hear or those who even are curious to see if maybe their ears will someday want to hear, I wanted to have a podcast that is slightly more directly pointing to the moon than I'm able to articulate in the rest of my life clearly. Because again, it's not a message that egos want to hear, that they're not real. (laughs) And that's, I laugh, but it really can be disturbing for egos to hear some of this stuff. Some people come to my work thinking that I'm like a Christian worship leader or an ex-Christian worship leader who's like deconstructing Christianity or whatever, any number of stories that people come to Michael Gunger's work with. And this is sort of the end of the funnel for me. When I think about all the work that I make, the music and the podcasts and whatever else, if there's something that people find in the other work, that makes them interested in hearing more what's at the bottom of all of this, this podcast and the book, this for me are kind of at the end of the funnel. Like you want to see what's actually happening here. Nothing. (laughs) There's nobody here. It's just you doing all of this, experiencing all of this. It's a fun house of mirrors. (laughs) again this is not a message for well anybody really it's a message for nobody by that I mean nobody that wants to think of themselves as a separate somebody there's part of me that's a little nervous about saying stuff like this because I know to the ego I probably sound like an asshole Like I'm trying to be clever and hidden and sound wise with philosophy or something. But the truth is, I have nothing to teach you. I have nothing to offer you. (laughs) I have nothing to sell you, nothing to convince you of. But I may have a few questions, a few jokes, a few little turns of phrase that may 
call myself to see myself. And if that doesn't make any sense to you, but you like the funny little jingles and weird things I say on this podcast, feel free to continue listening. And feel free to stop listening. Enjoy, however you like. But if you're one of the few who feel something true when somebody says something like, all is one, and you've tasted something about all of this, that you know that there is truth to what the mystics have said through all time. Then I encourage you to come with me on this journey. Take up your cross, if you will, so that you are ready when you're, when it's time to die. If you felt the call to see who you really are, it's not for the faint of heart. It's not for those looking to boost their egos to get a gold star for being an enlightened ego. The egos don't get to be enlightened because they're not real. But if you, capital Y, you, are beginning to become aware of yourself in that body over there, right here, (laughs) then I encourage you to keep listening, keep looking, Keep asking questions about the stories that you believe. There's a Bible verse that says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And I think that's true. Repetition can be incredibly useful and helpful to stabilizing your awareness, to seeing the truth. Again and again, coming back to who is believing these stories? Who is the one that's suffering? Who is the one that has the problem? And eventually, those who seek shall find. After awareness gets done looking for something else other than what it is, awareness finally comes to see itself again. It's called waking up. It's called enlightenment. It's called salvation, satori, nirvana, all sorts of different names in the traditions. And it's not something for really special people. It's not something for those who have done enough good stuff to deserve it. It's more like a death. It's more like, well, that ego story kind of had its run. didn't really work. kind of (laughs) broke. And the awareness that was trying to operate this like broken, breaking ego somehow caught a reflection of itself. It said, oh, I'm not that. That thought, that story, that sense of constricting smallness, I am. Yeah, so that's what we're doing here. And my manager tells me that sometimes when I talk about this stuff that I sound a bit like an asshole. And (laughs) so I'm going to sound like an asshole on the smaller podcast and try to be really nice and um, and mainstream and acceptable sounding on my bigger platforms and save this space for you weird, broken egos. <laughs> Not even really for you, broken egos, but for you. You, the true, beautiful, capital Y, you, beloved, so that you may see who you are, taste who you are in everything. Breathe freely, beloved, for this is all there is.